Hi, I'm Sharon Brett Kelly from The Detail. If you haven't heard, we're New Zealand's number one news and current affairs podcast, and we'd love you to give us a go. All these people we met were telling their like five-year-old children that a war was going to happen. When you see that flood water rising, your opportunities have become a bit limited. We had some suspicion that something was going to happen. I mean, you don't get 500 um, police officers in a city without people noticing. Sound interesting? We go behind the scenes to help you make sense of the news and bring you up to speed, speaking to the people who understand the story best. So join me and Emile Donovan and get the detail. Landing in your phone 5am Monday to Friday, just follow the detail on Apple, Spotify, iHeart or any good podcast app. And every three years, the Ministry for the Environment and Stats NZ, they put out this comprehensive assessment of New Zealand's environment, drawing together content from the most recent environmental indicators, plus previous domain reports and peer-reviewed, peer-reviewed scientific literature. Well, the latest report was released today, and it was structured quite differently than previous reports around Te Kahui or Matariki, the nine stars of Matariki. And the nine stars were used as an organising structure for the report and the focus was on environmental change in the context of people and that any change in the environment affects us as individuals, whānau and communities. Eugenie Sage, who is the Green Party's environment spokesperson, previously the Minister for the Environment, says the structure of the report puts the emphasis on our collective well-being. That Matariki structure is really new. I think it's amazing. And it's the first um, report from MFE that I've seen structured like that. It's it's a major step forward. I mean, particularly now, leading up to Matariki, when we have the holiday of Matariki, and just people wanting to learn more about... Uh, the, the nine stars of Matariki and how each of them relates to one of the aspects of nature, whether it's fresh water, the soils, uh, the land uh, and the oceans. How does it facilitate change reporting the environment in this way? Well, I think it, it's got a much stronger Te Māori perspective and really emphasising that as humans we are an integral part of nature and connected with it and because of that, we've got a responsibility to detail, uh, and we haven't always remembered that, or our whakapapa relationships uh, to detail. And this report makes that really explicit. And if people connect with nature, they care and they put those responsibilities into practical action. So it's quite a groundbreaking way of reporting, isn't it? I think so. It's... Um, very differently structured from previous State of the Environment reports and is a really welcome change. So shall we start with the good news or the bad news, or is it all bad news? Well, it doesn't tell us a lot that we don't know. We know that we've got a biodiversity crisis and we know that we've got a climate crisis and they're connected. We know that water quality is continuing to decline. We're still losing wetlands. We're still losing a lot of our native forests, particularly on the west coast and southland. Uh, So those indicators are not new. They've been updated, but it underlines the seriousness um, of the crises and the need for urgent action. The recent IPCC report on climate change said it's a code red for humanity. And this Environment Aotearoa 2022 report, does it also speak of the urgency needed to act? Yes. I mean, human well-being is intimately connected to the well-being of nature. Our economy relies on nature. And what it's saying is that the policy changes that we've made, and the government's made in fresh water, haven't been enough, is the way I read the report. We need to do more. Uh, Governments are going to change the regulations around wetlands, yet this report shows what dire straits they are in. In terms of the climate crisis, the increasing acidity in the oceans, the fact that a third of the commercial fish species that are caught um, commercially haven't had their stocks assessed, so we don't really know what uh, the health of those populations are. So we need to invest more in looking at what's actually happening to nature and we need the policies and the investment to change the way we're doing things to reduce our impact. Right, policy and investments, and you say the government needs to step up, basically, but why aren't you? Uh, Well, there were 
it's significant improvements in uh, water regulation last year. Jobs for Nature, which the Greens had a crucial part in establishing, is meaning that uh, there are thousands of people connecting more with nature through their uh, mahi. Uh, the Emissions Reduction Plan is due out in May, and that will have a whole programme of action uh, for climate. But it's also, as our cities expand, we're taking up food growing land. Developers have got a responsibility there. The new um, Natural Built Environments Bill, which will be introduced later this year, it's really got to prioritise uh, the tayo and move away from that uh, current ethos under the RMA of enabling human activity while uh, trying to reduce effects. So it's everybody needing to be conscious. All of the work that community organisations like predator free groups, iwi and hapu are doing on the ground is all helping create change. But the crises are serious and we need to do more. And I think one of the other interesting things in the report is just in because we're very urbanised people in Aotearoa, um, over 84% of us living in cities, yet the report shows a real deficit in the nature space in our cities and towns. And we have this myth of being clean, green Aotearoa, but compared to many European cities, we've got much less access to green space. So there are some fundamental things about the way we work in our cities and towns that also need to change. Can you just explain what te taio means in the context of this report? Oh, te taio I um, understand as the environment, the natural environment, and a sort of an embracing uh, term. And we have a strategy which um, was uh, initiated last term, uh, te mana o te taio, uh, in terms of the biodiversity strategy and all of the actions that are needed to improve the prospects for the 4,000 uh, native plants and wildlife that are threatened or at risk of extinction. And we've done some things there, like with freshwater fish. They're one of the more um, vulnerable uh, groups of native species. And we did some law changes last term, which um, improves the prospects for them. And there are now a lot of councils and te waka kotahi uh, that are doing things like making sure that there are um, culverts that block fish passage to the sea are removed. But we need to do so much more, particularly in the oceans, where there's been a real underinvestment in fishery science. Um, we need to do things like stopping bottom trawling on seamounts. That would be a really easy thing government could do to protect these biodiversity hotspots in the oceans. And, and to see a reported just recently that microplastics have been found in human blood. And I think the, this report showed that um, 95% of the hokey that they'd caught off the West Coast and in Cook Strait had microplastics in their gut. So it's when you're buying clothes, thinking about what you're buying and buying wool, cotton, natural products um, rather than things that can shed microplastic fibre. Yes, and reuse what you've got. And that's why the, the big changes that again started last term to really improve the recycling system, the container return scheme for beverage containers so you don't get uh, plastic ending up in streams, stormwater and then in the oceans. There is change happening, but the speed of change needs to increase and we need to prioritise it because we don't have a healthy economy, we don't have healthy people without healthy nature. Just while I've got you there, Eugenie, the, the Greens obviously want to ban mining on conservation land. What's happening in the Coromandel with the mine application from Oceana Gold? Good question. Um, we put in some Fiscal Information Act requests. I understand they haven't yet applied to the uh, local council uh, or the Waikato Regional Council for resource consents. Uh, they have all the consents they need from the Overseas Investment Office. They've bought some more farmland uh, to put their tailings um, impoundment and the, hope, uh, the entrance to the mine. But there's increasing community uh, opposition to that. And Archie's frog is one of our most threatened species. The mine is proposed to be underground, but Archie's are really sensitive to vibration. So all of the um, blasting is potentially going to have an impact on them. There's a lot of waste rock that would have to be taken out and uh, dumped. Then there's the big tailing impoundments. And with these extreme weather events um, in other countries, we've had big tailings impoundments that have overflowed and really destroyed river systems. So... Overseas companies, um, Canadian, Australian, UK, mining for gold and the profits largely go offshore 
we don't need that gold. We should be mining our electronic waste to recover precious metals, as the Royal Mint's doing in the UK, not mining the mountains of Coromandel. Well, we'll wait and see what happens there. I know the, the state of the environment must always be on your mind, but I hope you manage to get some downtime over Easter. Well, I think as people found in um, COVID, getting out in nature is so restorative for well-being. So I hope everyone has a really safe Easter and time to get out in nature. Pomario, Karen. Season 5 of Crimes NZ takes a look back at some of New Zealand's most notorious crimes from the Parker Hume murder It was Pauline who was the one who came up with the plan to the mysterious disappearance of Heidi Charles They agreed to rendezvous back at the lakefront in an hour's time and she's never been seen since she never returned and uh, no one knows what ever happened to her Season 5 of Crimes NZ is available now on the RNZ website Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you find your podcasts.